What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Figure Files. Today is a little bit different, a little bit special because I'm going to be doing a figure review, one of which I am so excited to break down and talk to you all about today. It is the Power Town Wrestling Mag MTA figure. And this is a line that I've been excited about since it was first announced. And I'm so excited about the different possibilities of getting figures that Mattel just can't because of licensing and expand our wrestling collection to a further degree. Now, we actually have had a Magnum TA figure from Mattel. It was part of the Lost Legends line. And it was great. I'm not going to hate on it all of a sudden, but I was really excited to see what Power Sound was going to do for so many reasons, including this thing you see right here, the U.S. USA, as Nikita Koloff will call it, the U.S. title. And this Magnum looks really good. I haven't done anything with this figure. I haven't opened it up just to look at this. And I am so excited. I don't know if you can catch the U.S. title right there. It's got his knee pads hanging in there. I mean, this is Magnum in his red. Mattel provided us Magnum in the black. So it was really cool to have a different version, a different look right down to the boots. I am excited about breaking this figure down. I got Bruiser Brody. I got Stan Hansen. And eventually I'll have Kerry Von Eric, but I'm looking at those three first. But I needed to start off with the boss, Madigan TA. So without further ado, let's take a look at him in the studio and unbox this Power Town Wrestling Magnum TA figure. All right, here's a Magnum TA Power Town where wrestling lives on Ultra's premium collectible Magnum TA figure includes the NWA United States Heavyweight Wrestling Championship belt. Look at it in all its glory. It looks spectacular. And then show the top here. Power Town where wrestling lives on. Magnum TA. Let's look to the different sides. Here's one glimpse of Magnum. You can see he's number three in the series. The other side is pretty much the same. Features Magnum. Shows him off. Nice bookcase if you want to put him on your shelf. Probably want to do it this side just so you can have the number showing. Series number one, number three. Now let's take a look at the back. So Magnum, of course, gets a prominent spot on the back, but then we can also see the cross cell with the other characters, the other figures, the rest of the luminaries in this wave. We got Kerry Von Eric, Luthez, Vern Gagne, Bruiser Brody, and Stan the Lariat Hansen. There's a little magnet in place keeping this locked in, so you can do that. Let's take a look at the inside. See Magnum with all of his accessories, knee pads, swappable hands, leather jacket, and the U.S. title. There you go. That looks great. So these are not pictures. And looking through Google, I know which ones they use. These are these actual drawings, and they look amazing. I really like the way these turned out. They're some of Magnum's iconic stances, shots, moments where you know just looking through google you can kind of see them but this bio is incredible this is what i'm going to consider the new standard in wrestling packaging bios from now on because there's so much information packed in here and it's amazing let's try to go through it when you think of 1980s wrestling heartthrobs you think of magnum ta best known for his time in championship wrestling in florida mid-south wrestling and jim crockett promotions magnum ta was one of the hottest wrestlers of the early to mid 80s capturing his first heavyweight championship in 1984 by defeating mr wrestling 2 the north american title in mid-south magnum quickly became an overnight main event draw standing six foot one 245 pounds magnum ta was best known for his belly-to-belly -belly suplex with a wrestling style that evolved into a classic brawler with an intensity second to none so i like that we don't have stats on these but we see how big he is and how tall he is not all wrestlers have career-defining moments but magnum ta may best be remembered for two in 1985 magnum D defeated Tully Blanchard to regain the NWA United States Heavyweight Championship in a brutal I Quit Steel Cage match. Then in 1986, following the stripping of his title, Madame T.A. faced off against Nikita Koloff, the Russian Nightmare. In a best of seven series, split three wins apiece, the tie-breaking match was decided with help from Ivan and Crusher Kushvik as Koloff won the series. One step away from the world championship, Magnum's in rear career was cut tragically short following an automobile accident in October 1986. Against all odds, Magnum recovered and found his fit into wrestling again, working for Turner Broadcasting until 1991. 
following his career in wrestling, Magnum forged a new path. Although Magnum's in-rear career only spanned a short seven-year period, his trajectory in professional wrestling leaves many asking the question, what if? Magnum TA's legacy may best be reflected in the persona of wrestlers of today when you see rebellious face in sight, heel heat. All right, so that's the bio. That's everything. Let's take a look at Magnum inside. Spoiler warning, I did kind of cut the tape just to make it easier. So this slides right out. So it's back in. So here's Magnum. These parts will fly out because of the way they're situated in here. But I don't know if you can quite make out the knee pads. I actually say left and right. It's another close-up look at the U.S. title. And I was really impressed with how the detail it captured, how much it, it reflects the actual design of the belt. It's got the blue tint on those side panels. I don't think you can make that out, but... The lettering is crisp and clean. You can see it actually says NWA. That's really cool. Let's take Magnum out of the package now. All right, so here's Magnum, the boss, unopened. Here's all of the accessories. Let's throw up the hands here. And then you guys, I'll put them on in a second. But let's take a look at Magnum himself. Really solid head sculpt. You can see that detail in his hair, and I think that really looks good. It's that dirty blonde look all through the mustache. It's a lot thicker. I really like how that turned out, too. And the leather jacket's really nice. It's got his hair going with a nice range, nice length mullet. That's good. I mean, you can't have an 80 superstar without the mullet. And the jacket, I'm hoping you can see, has detailing as well where it's not just a flat black. It's got detail as well. So it's really got that leather look to it. There you go. I think you can see it there now. But yeah, this is a really nice leather jacket. It's just same as every other jacket you see with wrestling figures. Zero movement. So it's just a plastic piece. But these boots are really nice. They have a star detail. Magnum would tradition traditionally wear more of an eagle up top see the eagle down here at the bottom of the boots but this is nice because this is what he wore back when he was fighting Nikita Koloff in their best of seven series so this is really accurate to a, an entire Magnum war all right let's try to get this jacket off this is the same kind of materials you've seen with other wrestling figures so it's not going to be fun or easy to take off let's try to make it a little easier by removing the hands they popped off really nice and easy so let's see if that helped at all whatsoever success okay that's that's a pain and i really wish that they did these hard plastic pieces they made that material a lot easier to fiddle with because you got your sleeves that can't move it's just really hard to take the the arms out of the jacket sleeves. So pain there. Let's put the hands back on them. And they snap in and on really easily, which is nice because you definitely want that. So Magnum is pretty solid. He's not skinny like some other figures. It looks like he's 245 pounds. So that's pretty good. I like that a lot. Let's see here. The head sculpt. You can definitely see this chest hair though. And that looks really good. It looks like real chess hair as opposed to like the dots we'll see on Mattel figures. And I'm really not trying to bash Mattel's work. I think they do really good wrestling figures when they try and when they put their best effort on it. But this is a whole different level of chess hair. And he's got some on his arms too. There you go. You can see it now. And here as well. Again, really nicely done. Great paint job on that end. And let's see here. It moves pretty well. Let's take a look at how Magnum moves. I mean, you know, it's great to have a wrestling figure, but you want it to actually have some articulation and be able to do stuff. All right, single jointed elbow. That's not awesome. That's not great. Let's see. There's no butterfly joint shoulder here. So he's only got so much range. But he tags back pretty far, all things considered. 
Not a lot of floppiness to the joints. He's pretty solid all around. See the high, high he can go. And that leg works pretty well, so he can kick up pretty nicely. But again, single jointed joints here, so he's not going to be able to do what you want to do with some of your other wrestling figures. This is painted uh, flesh color, so that's going to be interesting. But it's not really going to matter because he's going to have the knee pad on anyway. I guess I should put that on now since I've already started. Let's see. This one, you probably won't be able to read it, but it actually says right here. So pop this on to the right leg. That's helpful. I don't think it's going to really matter in the long run, but it's nice that they actually included it for us just to be like, hey, just in case you don't know, this is the right knee pad. And that went on pretty easily. No problem with that. The magnum will wear these like, right about here. You know, with the trim right here, this is how, his, how he wore the accent on his knee tape. So you can put it just like that. That's really nice accuracy to how Madden wore his tights. Let's see if I can show you guys again. It doesn't look like it though. Let me pop this open a little bit just so you can maybe see it. Maybe, hopefully. I don't think you can see it, but there's an L, trust me. There's a left and a right, so you can actually see it. And you see the boots have all the details of stuff we don't really care about, but at least it's on the bottom. It's not on the, the knees or legs, so they're as out of the way as possible. And the knee pads are much better than what we see with Mattel's figures. They're not going to get all in the way. They're not going to impact impair the articulation at all you see how easily it, it come came down without affecting anything that's really nice i think they're gonna stay in place just fine there's a foot tilt ankle tilt there and i can go up about that far it's a good range for foot here's more of that boot detail so you can check that out i like it i think the boots are cool not the ones i thought they were gonna go with but that's fine all right Magnum has a bit of a tan, and it's really hard to show it off here. I wish you could see it, but it's, they did a really nice job giving him a tan so it didn't look pale. And I think this figure turned out really well in just terms of the likeness to Magnum. Okay, so let's let's see how Magnum, the Power Town wrestling figure, let's compare it to some other wrestling figures. And by other wrestling figures, I mean Mattel. Now Mattel released their own Magnum T as part of the Lost Legends line. He was originally slated for Legend Series 7, but it got delayed, and it was this big thing of, oh, no, we're never going to get a cool Magnum TA figure. To go along with some of these other NWA legends, they released him, and it was a really cool big deal. Magnum 6-1, and whew, it's such a difference between these two figures. It's, it's wild. Now, this is the boot mold that I was talking about, the boot design. It was a little bit more common than what Magnum typically wore. I get why Power Town chose to do a different one. Again, there's nothing wrong with this one. It's accurate to what Magnum wore, but I think this is more of what I would have wanted to see from his design. And boy, <laughs> the differences in the head sculpt is wild. So look at this head sculpt difference. I thought the Mattel one was pretty good for the time, but comparing it, these two, it's like night and day. This one on the left, the Power Town one is really captures magnum's likeness this one and i'm sure if they were to do a new one mattel with their true effects pieces would make a better looking sculpt but wow and i did think that magnum was missing his wrist tape and i'll have to check to verify which one is right in this case but kind of interesting to see that mattel included that and power town did not but just in the comparison this 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 knee thigh wrap is definitely too tall, too big. He's got these big leg sleeves, which are going to make bending a little bit of a pain. They're going to have to hang super low. This functions a lot better. Functions much better on the Power Town figure. Um, let's see. Now, this one is before Mattel started doing double jointed elbows. So this is not going to be a deal where it's like, oh, man, it's so much better. But you can see that flex. Of the Mattel figure. Let's see if the Power Town can do a same similar kind of pose. Difference is kind of negligible, all things considered. 
is pretty close. They're both pretty similar in terms of that. Um, this is a different range here on this torso bit. Didn't have a great back and forth or side to side, as you can see, compared to the Mattel one, which has eh, this much range, no side tilt whatsoever. I don't know. I think in terms of articulation, it's kind of a toss up, but this matter can definitely do a leapfrog. Let's see what the Mattel one can do. Eh, same deal. No issues there either. Let's see. What can he do? Can he pull off a belly to belly? I think that's the most important thing I need to know with this Magnum TA figure. So let's put him into the imaginary ring with him in. And he can kind of, yeah, he can pull that off. So that's good enough for me. No issues there. Can he do a high knee? Uh, yeah, he can do that. Uh, let's see. What else can Magnum do? I mean, Magnum was pulling out some of these fake guys. And it's like a clothesline, a punch, and then belly to belly. It's one of my favorite parts about his matches. He was taking out jobbers really quickly. He had no patience, no time for them. But see how Magnum looks with some of his other counterparts, his other NWA counterparts from Mattel. We need to start off, baby, with the dream, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Now, this is kind of interesting because... Torso wise, the Mattel Dusty is almost the same size as the Magnum. And I don't know if that's a bad thing. Dusty wasn't in shape, but Magnum was. Let's see how this looks more from a side to side view. So, Power Towns Magnum is just a little bit taller than Dusty. I think Dusty was taller. Dusty should be just a little bit taller. He's six foot two, Magnum six, six foot one. That's not a huge deal, not a huge difference, but if you're a real stickler for height, there you go. So we got America's team here. It's kind of fun to have these two from similar, in similar scales. Definitely not perfect scale compared to what Mattel is doing with their line. Let's throw in some more comparisons. We don't have Oli, Oli Anderson, so I'm not going to put him in, but we're going to put in his brother, Arn. Let's put him in. You know, so you see, I guess the problem with Power Town versus the Mattel figures. He's going to look like he fits in height wise, but Magnum clearly, clearly has a lot more girth to him than his Mattel counterpart. And here is the Ultimates Ric Flair. Again. He kind of fits in okay height-wise. They should be the same height, but Magnum is definitely looking taller, thicker. Definitely looks like he's part of a different line. So for those of you who want to really match up your Mattel and your elite figures with these Power Town figures, you might be a little bit disappointed on that. He's really broad, maybe a better scale overall for a wrestling figure. He's solid and thick, whereas, you know, Arn Anderson wasn't this thin and slender in real life. Ric Flair, ditto. But, yeah, I wish he were a little bit thinner just to fit in better with existing figure companies. But height-wise, Magnum and Flair, they're both 6'1". They match up pretty well. Arn looks a lot smaller. I guess he doesn't have the hair. But, yeah. And then... I say them for last. If you got Magnum TA, <laughs> you 100% absolutely have to have his arch rival, Tully Blanchard. And the scale isn't so far off here. Maybe if we get a younger version of Tully with his longer, fuller hair, they'll match up even better. But I don't think that's too far off with these two. So there's Tully and Magnum again from this pro from this shot. They're not going to look very compatible just because Magnum is like a man size and Tully looks a little leaner, probably too lean. I think if I were to go, hey, what's the better body type regardless of articulation? I'd say the Power Town figure is a little bit better, They're more realistic and true to what the wrestlers look like, whereas Mattel tends to skew a little bit thinner with their figures. Let's take a look at Magnum's accessories now. So we've already done the hands and taking them off. Let's see how these alternate ones look. Actually, you're just stuck with this one for the left hand. 
which I thought was interesting because you probably want an alternate one too, but these alternate hands are just for the right hand. So you got the hands up thumb or hands up index finger, traditional magnum pose. You've seen it, it's even in the package. So you can do that, no problem. That looks pretty good. Then you've got, because you need to punch out Ric Flair and Four Horsemen, any chance you get, Madden has got a magnum, has a right hand fist, so he can punch away. It's got some back and forth articulation on that end. So that's pretty good, pretty nice. But these parts both switch out. And because I was curious, I was like, hey, let's see what that elite vest would look like on magnum. Okay, not bad with the vest. That would work for sure and didn't look too ridiculous on them. So that's nice if you didn't want to do the leather jacket, which I might not so often just because it was such a pain to put on and off. This fits in pretty well with Magnum. I think that looks good. And it fits in pretty well. Now, let's go for the coup de gras. In terms of Magnum accessories, that means the one and only United States Heavyweight Championship. Here this is. This belt is really well done. So well done and so accurate to the actual title. It's got four white stripes, four red stripes, just like the title. Let's see if I can pull up more detail. NWA United States Heavyweight Championship. I still can't see the blue. Sorry about that. I'll probably have to do this better in pictures. But yeah, that's a really nice looking title. Let's whip this bad boy around Magnum's waist. So it's got tabs like this on here on the back there you go so you can see that it looks like i'm gonna have to take this all the way to the absolute last two to get a snug fit on magnum maybe i can just do these these no i'm gonna need to go all the way because even with the second to the left one i still need that all the way to get a better fit so maybe if you got some bigger guys maybe we'll put this around dusty's waist that would work, but yeah, you need all of it to, to actually fit. It just means it's going to look a little weird from the back. You're going to have this much hanging out, but I don't care. I've got the USA title. As, Mag as Magnum's rival, Nikita would say, this is really cool to have this belt around Magnum TA's waist. That is so cool. And it's a face-off of titles. With Ric Flair, the nature boy, with his World Heavyweight Championship in Magnum, with his, and it's kind of interesting looking at the difference of these two belts. Now, Power Town was able to get the full licensing for the NWA US Heavyweight title, and it shows you can see the extra detail they put into this with the blue, with the dark red. It's colored appropriately too, but yeah, there's a lot of great detail. Magnum's ankles are a little bit loose. He is going to. Get his lean on a little bit more than I'd like. That's something that hopefully is not an issue with all of them. He seems to lock it in pretty well when he does, but you have to make sure you get that sweet spot with him. And this is Ultimate Ric Flair, so he's got a little bit better articulation. So he's going to be able to pull off moves like a figure four. Madam's not going to be able to do that. He's just going to sit around, basically. I don't even think he has the ability to do that kind of stuff. But, you know, i got a wrestling figure. Let's put him in a ring and see what happens. Maybe Power Challenge is going to give us the NWA ring proper, but this is the best I could do under the circumstances. The WCW World Championship ring. Let's see how Madden looks in scaled in here. He looks pretty solid on a ring. Fits, doesn't look like a giant tower and over the ropes, which is nice. You'd like to see that, of course. Let's take the title off of him. So he's going to need to go in here and wrestle and do his thing. And let's bring in Tully. Let's have him face off again. The latest in their heated story rivalry. You can lock up pretty well doing that. Hit a regular basic pose like that. Um, the ropes. Hit a clothesline. Awesome. Let's see. Can hit the standing 10 count from the corner. It's interesting. I'm not quite sure if you can see this, but right in this corner section here of his chest piece, it's already starting to get a little white. I don't think I've done much, but apparently in my posing, it's warped it just a little bit. Something to keep in mind with your figures. 
if you like to pose and do all kinds of cool wrestling poses with your figures. So he can hit the corner punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No problem. Just throw him in here. A little backdrop action. That's great too. And it's time for the one and only belly to belly. And he can do basically the movement that you want to see here with this. So he can wrap Telly up, almost do a full grab, because he doesn't have another gripping hand, which would really help that. But he can definitely hold Telly and swing around and do the belly to belly. One, two, three, watch out for Baby Doll or J.J. Dillon. Magnum wins the match. Gets to keep his U.S. title. Let's see if I can do one of these deals so you can hold it as such. Yes, he can do that. That's good. So a lot of fun. I wouldn't think that you're going to want to go too hard and throwing Magnum around and doing all that stuff. He's a little bit more gentle than the elite figures from Mattel, the Ultimate Edition figures, but he really does some cool stuff. I'm a big fan. like what they've done with him. Let's see how he looks with a couple other figures since I got him in the ring and right around here. We can absolutely have positive. We have to crush the four horsemen. You got to bring in the Legion of Doom, Hawk, and Animal. These guys are too slight anyway. Mattel needs to hopefully get an update on these guys. But here's Hawk, Animal, with Magnum TA. And even though we don't have it at the time, this is a little bit... Just a year too late for Madden to take part in it. We got Dusty throwing a little War Games action. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Classic Jim Crockett Promotions NWA action. Got Madden at the Road Warriors. Dusty. I think putting these guys all together, you're not going to have any issues. They're going to look really cool next to each other. Adam, of course, is going to look bigger. He's, he's going to stand a lot thicker than Hawk or Animal from Mattel. But at this rate, I'm kind of happy with what... Power Town did with Magnum TA, so I wouldn't mind getting NWA versions of the Road Warriors, maybe AWA versions, a new version of Dusty Rose. We're really curious to see who they exactly have under license because, you know, we had that Ted DiBiase that was coming, but then it was like, whoops, sorry, no Ted DiBiase for you. Got replaced by Bruiser Brody. I think that was a bad trade off, but it'd be really interesting to see who else we get. So there it goes, the Magnum TA Power Town Wrestling, where Legends is on Series 1, Wave 3 Magnum TA figure. Overall, I think he's a really strong figure. I like the size, the stockiness to him. I like the boot design. I love the way they implemented the knee pads. I wish he came with more than one alternate left hand sculpt. I mean, there's only one, not even an alternate. He's got three with the fist, with the other extended hand and the index finger pointing up. Those are nice accessories. Of course, I love the U.S. title. Put that back in firm display so you can check it out one more time. But while this has really great detail, this leather jacket, way too similar to what we've gotten from Mattel in the past. And it's just a pain to take it on and off. I think it's going to be a real issue over time. But I really love the detail on it where it's like, hey, it's not just straight black. You've got some wear and tear to it. So that looks nice. But I hope Power Town can fix this solution a little bit more. So in the in the future, where we get figures with more jackets, robes, and all that good stuff, they'll fit in an awful lot easier. But pretty happy with this and want to see where else this line goes. Let's get that Nikita Koloff. Let's get Ivan Crusher. Get the whole Russian squad. Let's get Atelier Blanchard, the Four Horsemen, and get Dusty Rose in there. I'd love to recollect the NWA figures in his style. Ronnie Garvin, Barry Windham, Lex Luger, you know, maybe Sting. But it'd be really fun to see these guys in action figure form from Power Town because I've really loved the way they pull these guys off. So that's it for my in the box review, out of the box review of Power Town Wrestling Magnum TA. I'm going to do Stan Hansen or Bruiser Brody next. Let me know which one you want to see. But for now, that's it. Thanks as always for watching. This episode of Loud's Figure Files has been filed. 